Imagine a world defined by scale, a world 66 million years ago, during the final furious act of the Cretaceous period. The land trembled under the weight of colossal theropods, and the oceans churned with the fury of monstrous mosasaurs. Yet, above it all, a different kind of titan reigned, a ruler of the atmosphere. For decades, one name has dominated the record books for the largest creature to ever take flight, Quetzalcoatlus. This majestic pterosaur, named after the feathered serpent god of the Aztecs, is universally recognized as the aerial behemoth. Its image, a bizarre, impossibly large beast, is cemented in our minds as the pinnacle of evolutionary engineering. But what if I told you the history books were incomplete? What if, simultaneously, in a secluded corner of that ancient world, an even larger, more terrifying entity was carving out its own legacy? An animal that was not just vast, but brutally robust. A flyer built not just for height and wingspan, but for pure, unadulterated power. It's time to shift our focus from the famous Texan giant to its overlooked contemporary, a beast from Europe's secluded waters, Hatsigopteryx Thambima. This creature didn't just fly, it commanded the land and the sky, establishing itself not only as the largest winged animal in history, but also as the undisputed top predator of its isolated realm. This is the story of the largest, heaviest, and most fearsome animal to ever escape the grasp of gravity. Our journey begins not with a glorious discovery, but with confusion. The late 1970s brought paleontologists to the rugged terrain of Romania. Amidst the ancient sediments, they unearthed colossal bone fragments, a piece of a jaw, an enormous humerus, and sections of a massive skull. The initial assumption, based on the sheer size and robust nature of the finds, was that these belonged to a new species of giant theropod, a predatory dinosaur like T. rex. The bones were simply too thick, too heavy, to belong to anything that flew or so they thought. It took years of meticulous analysis, years of connecting the scattered pieces of this biological puzzle, to realize the incredible truth. These were not the remains of a ground-shaking dinosaur. They belonged to a pterosaur, a member of the Asdarkid family, known for their extraordinarily long necks and stilt-like legs. But this was no ordinary Asdarkid. It was an anomaly. It wasn't until 2002 that this magnificent creature was formally recognized and given its name, Hatsigopteryx Thambima. The name itself is a declaration of its majesty and the uniqueness of its home. It translates roughly to the Hatseg Basin Wing Monster. This creature's very identity is tied to the remarkable location of its discovery, the prehistoric landmass known today as Hayteg Island. The rivalry between Hatsigopteryx and Quetzalcoatlus is not a simple matter of a few centimeters. It is a question of evolutionary strategy. Let's begin with the measure we all know, the wingspan. Like its North American relative, Hatsigopteryx boasted a breathtaking wingspan, conservatively estimated to be around 11 meters, 36 feet. That is the length of a small passenger jet. However, the evidence from the most critical flight bone, the humerus, tells a different story. The humerus of Hatsigopteryx was demonstrably longer and, crucially, significantly more massive than that of any known Quetzalcoatlus specimen. This key difference has led paleontologists to push the upper estimate of its wingspan to a staggering 12 meters, 39 feet, potentially placing it ahead in pure reach. But where Hatsigopteryx truly separated itself was in mass and structure. If Quetzalcoatlus was the elegant, long-distance glider, Hatsigopteryx was the aerial fortress. It was, quite simply, built like a tank. Consider its terrestrial stature. Standing on its towering, stilt-like legs, it reached an impressive height of 5 meters, 16.5 feet, the equivalent of a modern adult giraffe. Yet, its bones were thicker, its joints more robust, and its general skeletal structure far stockier than its counterpart. This combination of superior height, massive wingspan, and sheer robustness makes the scientific case compelling. Hatsigopteryx was the heaviest pterosaur, and by extension, the largest animal to ever fly in terms of overall mass and structural integrity. On its isolated island home, it wasn't just a flyer. It was the largest terrestrial predator in Europe at the time. 
To understand the extraordinary dimensions and predatory specialization of Hatsigopteryx, we must understand its world, Hayteg Island. This was not a vast continent, but an isolated, relatively small landmass, separated from the Eurasian mainland by hundreds of kilometers of open water. This geographic isolation created a unique, evolutionary hothouse. With nowhere to go and limited resources, the pressures of insular dwarfism took hold of many resident species. The result? Hayteg Island was home to an array of dwarf dinosaurs. Tiny hadrosaurs, miniature titanosaurs, and other uniquely scaled creatures roamed the island's subtropical, woodland forests. While these small species flourished, one critical group was missing, the giant mainland theropods. The fearsome, multi-ton predators like the Tyrannosaurids or Carcharodontosaurids never made it to Hayteg. This vacuum at the apex of the food chain provided the ultimate evolutionary opportunity for Hatsigopteryx. With no terrestrial competition for the top predator spot, this flying reptile was able to exploit the rich supply of dwarf dinosaurs. It not only grew to immense size but adapted its entire morphology, its head and neck, to fulfill the role of the island's primary hunter. Its giant size was not just a biological fluke. It was the direct, terrifying consequence of ecological niche filling. This is perhaps the most defining characteristic of the Hatsig Basin wing monster, its head. Hatsigopteryx possessed one of the largest skulls of any non-marine animal in history, reaching an estimated length of 2.5 meters, 8 feet 2 inches. To put that in perspective, that's a head longer than most modern compact cars. Crucially, this skull defied the typical architecture of pterosaurs. Most flying reptiles have extremely delicate, thin-walled skulls designed to minimize weight. Hatsigopteryx's skull was the opposite. Exceptionally robust, sturdy, and built for immense mechanical stress. This rugged head was supported by an equally specialized neck. While other Asdarkids had absurdly long, slender necks, Hatsigopteryx's neck was comparatively short and broad, only about half the expected length for its overall body size. This architectural change was an engineering masterstroke. The shorter, thicker vertebrae gave the neck phenomenal strength and durability, able to withstand forces estimated to be up to 10 times its total body weight. This morphology speaks volumes about its behavior. Such a heavy, durable head and massively strong neck were not designed for dainty fishing or scavenging carrion. They were built for killing. The ecological evidence and the anatomical features align perfectly to paint a picture of a fearsome predator. The short, powerful neck and huge, strong jaw suggest that Hatsigopteryx hunted and killed prey that was often too large to swallow whole, requiring significant force to subdue. Its diet consisted of the dwarf dinosaurs of Hayteg. While it may have consumed smaller creatures, its specialization points towards ambushing the juveniles and subadults of larger species, or perhaps even the adult, smaller statured dinosaurs like Magurosaurus pollutus and Telmatosaurus. How did it kill? It's believed the pterosaur operated as a terrestrial generalist forager. It would walk the island on its tall legs, surveying the terrain. Once prey was located, it would strike with devastating force likely killing larger victims by stabbing or bludgeoning them with its colossal, rugged skull. Imagine a massive, airborne hammer blow delivered by a creature the height of a giraffe. It was an overwhelming, terrifying display of power that ensured Hatsigopteryx truly was the apex predator of its isolated domain. The critical question remains, how could an animal this heavy, this robust, and this large actually fly? Evolution solved this problem with ingenious bioengineering. To successfully achieve flight, the animal's bone structure needed to be simultaneously incredibly strong and incredibly light. Paleontologists have discovered that the bones of Hatsigopteryx were not dense. They contained extensive internal pits, hollows, and thin structural walls, a design often likened to styrofoam or expanded polystyrene foam. These air-filled voids created a structure that was rigid and immensely durable against structural stress, yet light enough for flight. The mechanics of getting airborne were likely a spectacle in themselves. Launching an animal of this immense mass from a standing position was impossible. Instead, like a massive slingshot, it would have used a specialized quadrupedal launch, 
pushing off the ground with both its powerful legs and arms to propel itself skyward. Newer studies suggest that due to its maximum size and weight limits, Hatsigopteryx was likely not built for prolonged, continuous flight like an albatross. Instead, its aerial capabilities were likely utilized for short bursts, to survey its hunting territory, quickly cross large distances on the island, and efficiently locate prey. It was a tactical flyer, covering its massive domain with purpose and efficiency. For millions of years, Hatsigopteryx Thambima ruled the skies and the land of Hayteg Island. Its ecosystem, rich with unique, dwarf dinosaur species and lush subtropical vegetation, was a stable refuge. The terror it inspired was unmatched. But no dynasty lasts forever. The reign of the pterosaurs, the non-avian dinosaurs, and every other giant reptile of that era was brought to a catastrophic end 66 million years ago. The colossal asteroid impact at Chicxulub plunged the planet into darkness and chaos, triggering the mass extinction event that fundamentally reshaped life on Earth. The flying monster of the Hayteg Basin vanished, leaving behind only its monumental bones as a testament to its scale. Hatsigopteryx's legacy is one of ultimate evolutionary success. It reached the absolute maximum limit of what is physically possible for a flying predatory animal. It didn't just survive in a unique environment. It became the definition of its environment, the apex of a biological experiment conducted on an ancient island. The story of the largest flyer has been wrongly told for too long. It is not just about the longest wingspan, but about the thickest bones, the most powerful neck, and the heaviest frame. It's about the Hatseg Basin Wing Monster. So, the next time you hear the name Quetzalcoatlus, remember its European cousin. Remember the predator that stood as tall as a giraffe and wielded a skull the length of a car. Remember Hatsigopteryx, the true ruler of the Cretaceous sky. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join us as we uncover more incredible, untold stories from the deepest trenches of prehistory. And tell us in the comments, if you could witness any ancient animal take flight, would you choose the massive wingspan of Quetzalcoatlus or the brutal power of Hatsigopteryx? Let us know below.